Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely T 2002. Hey you guys, good afternoon. I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. So anyways, I want to come on here and do a podcast slash, you know, video. You know how I do, honey. Um, And I had to talk about some stuff that's just been on my mind, on my heart. And y'all know when I keep thinking about something, I have to talk about it. I have to let it out because it's going to drive me insane. Okay, it's going to drive me crazy. (laughs) So what's going down is this. This is something that's starting to really bother me. I hit on it yesterday um, during my live stream, but I want to do a whole podcast about it today so I want to talk about the whole George Floyd funeral tour okay so initially when all this happened when they were talking about burying him I assumed that they would do a service here and then you know possibly just bury him in Texas but that people would fly here and you know come to the funeral you know his family and things like that closest associates so I didn't want to go to the funeral. I had no intentions of going. I didn't personally know him. I personally knew Philando. I don't know George. So I had no intentions of going to his funeral. But I know a few of my friends. They did want to go to the memorial slash funeral and go pay respect. So they were going to go down there. I was going to live stream because I didn't want to watch it on television. I just didn't want to give any more energy to it. And so once I got off my live stream last week, um... People started hitting me up because I'm trying to figure out, you know, what all happened at the funeral, what was said. And people were hitting me up saying that they did not allow the public of Minneapolis to go to the funeral. But for some strange reason, celebrities who did not know him were all in attendance in the front row. So they made this funeral and there was all types of seats. They made it for the celebrities. Um, People like Tyrese had on no type of mask. Um, They said Tiffany Haddish got up there and spoke. And the woman, Darnella, who initially filmed the event, she wasn't allowed to go. I even had tea sippers who told me that their parents worked with George Floyd um, at his job. The co-workers weren't allowed to go. So this was something that was set aside for his closest documented family members and celebrities. So I want to go ahead and put you guys some video footage here of the celebrities talking outside of the memorial in the Twin Cities. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Everybody needs to do like President Hagan and they need to start a scholarship, a George Floyd. All universities need to start a George Floyd uh, scholarship for black students. Do exactly like President Hagan did here at North Central university and that's exactly what needs to happen well said well said how are you man uh you know what man it's not it's not about me i think it's more about just standing with the family you know in a moment like this just literally letting them know that they're not alone uh we now we now have a job to do which is elevate our voices use our platforms and really push the initiative for change so um you know for me it was a no-brainer just to come uh more importantly man when you just look at what's going on globally and you look at you look at the many different voices that are now being used and people aligning themselves be here today and how important was it it's painful unfortunately as a black man we've been in these rooms way too many times and um, God has given us all a a platform, a stage, influence, and whatever level of comfort, whatever level of reassurance, whatever level of just being fully present, and whatever comfortability we have contributed to on any level of just being here, um, that's what we wanted to do. All right, so you guys just saw that. You guys just saw what Kevin Hart and Ludacris and people who I'm, I know for a fact did not know that man, but for some reason felt the need to fly all the way here, um, you know, to come see him or view the body and whatever else, right? 
So that kind of felt very, very ritualistic to me. I thought that was very interesting that they had a lot of high ranking black celebs come out, even in the way they were dressed, um, Tyrese and the Black Panther attire. Everything felt very, very ritualistic. I did hear bits and pieces of Al Sharpton's eulogy, and he did say some poignant things, but I couldn't bring myself to watch a two hour funeral. I wasn't going to, you know, invest my energy into that. Then I started finding out that they're about to come to North Carolina. And I'm like, well, hold on now. This doesn't make any sense. Why are they going to North Carolina? Like, granted, his sister and all them, they're from North Carolina. That's where they live. But this is the same sister that had asked people, um, you know, for money, for a GoFundMe to help her come to Minneapolis. And so her GoFundMe definitely exceeded the $5,000 that she initially asked for. She got, you know, several hundred thousand so my thing is, if the sister and everybody was flown out here by and they got GoFundMe money, why did they need to do a tribute in North Carolina? This doesn't make any sense. And thousands of people, the difference between the one in Minneapolis and North Carolina is that thousands of people, the public, were able to stand in line and go view him and go pay respects. So I thought that was very interesting that in the Twin Cities, it was only for the celebrities, okay? It was like this celebrity energy that was invited but in North Carolina, they allowed the people to come and they came in droves. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip. North Carolina, where thousands gathered for an emotional farewell to George Floyd in the state where he was born. ABC's Victor Okendo joins us with more. Victor, good morning. Good morning with the service inside the church was private, but that did not stop the huge crowds from gathering here in the small town of Rayford, North Carolina. We heard from George Floyd's friends, family and local officials, including the county sheriff, a black man who wants his fellow officers to recognize that they are part of the problem and he does not want George Floyd's death to be in vain. More than 10,000 people descended on the small town of Rayford, North Carolina, not to mourn the loss of George Floyd, whose death sparked a worldwide movement, but to celebrate their native son. Some death ain't about dying. Some death is about waking all of us up. Near his birthplace, hundreds of Floyd's friends and family gathered at Saturday's emotional memorial service. And we must all come together and come to the front lines to protect each other. Since early Saturday morning when his casket was wheeled into the Douglas Cape Fear Conference Center, the line stretched for miles, filled with people who wanted to stand in solidarity with the Floyd family. I feel so sad because it very well could have been my brother, my son, my uncle, any of those. I saw my people. I, you know, he's, he's one of us. The local sheriff among those boldly calling for change. We are part of the problem. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip and what went down in North Carolina. So now today is June 9th, okay? And they are having a funeral in Houston, Texas. And I'm just like, I don't remember Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, or any big name celebrities' bodies going on these tours like they didn't take michael jackson's body back to gary indiana the city that you know raised him they kept it in la so i thought this was very strange and so you know now the funeral's being live streamed everybody's watching it i had just posted all this on ig and i was basically saying this just doesn't sit well with me this is very strange you know i understand the death was high profile but they didn't do this for philando they didn't do this for alton sterling they didn't do this for eric gardner and i'm sure many of them had family members and had ties to other communities this is very strange to me so i want you guys to go ahead and watch this snippet of what's going down right now in Houston, Texas. Check this out. Despite a heat index of 100 degrees and the need to social distance and wear masks, a massive crowd came to Floyd's public viewing, including many who had never met him. And we're all family at the end of the day anyway, so um, so I we're here to support the movement and support the Floyd family. Floyd's family met privately today with former Vice President Joe Biden. This photo tweeted by the family's attorney. Now, Floyd was born in North Carolina. He grew up in Houston's inner city third ward neighborhood where a mural now pays tribute. This is where it started from and he was somebody. At Jack Yates High School, Floyd was a six foot six star athlete, making it to the state football championship and earning a college basketball scholarship. So your, your first alley-oop was to My George? My first alley-hoop was to George Floyd. 
his heart was just like gold, man. It was, it was so, it, it, the perfect guy, man. Perfect guy on our team. He's still remembered by a second grade teacher, Waynell Sexton. She recently dug up one of Floyd's old assignments from Black History Month. I want to be a Supreme Court judge. A dream inspired by Thurgood Marshall. We could never have predicted when we were in that classroom with that what the impact that this eight-year-old was going to have on justice. He wanted to work in the area of justice, and he has certainly fulfilled his dream. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. And you mean to tell me that a man who is 46 years old, they done drug up his second-grade teacher, and she conveniently happened to have some artwork that he did in second grade during Black History Month where he wanted to be a Supreme Court justice. If y'all don't see the ritualistic bullshit and the emotional manipulation that they're doing, I don't know what else to tell you guys, okay? I'm younger than George Floyd and I don't have Nan thing from the second grade. And I even highly doubt that my second grade teacher even remembers who the hell I was. You know, let alone they were able to find her and she just conveniently happened to have a drawing that he did back in second grade. So if you believe that nonsense, I have a bridge here in the Twin Cities that I'm willing to sell you, even though I don't own it. <laughs> and I want to go even deeper. And this might turn some of y'all off, but that's okay. This is what's on my mind. When you look at Minnesota, Minnesota's at the, near the top of the map. North Carolina is all the way down here in the southeast. And then you have Texas, you know, hitting more towards like the south, southwest. But long story short, that makes a triangle. I don't know if y'all realize that. Two southern states, the one up north, it makes a perfect triangle. And I made that damn triangle, okay? I didn't get that from anybody else. I drew the lines myself, you know, as I was just trying to figure all this stuff out. But yeah, it makes a perfect triangle. So I just, this just does not sit well with me at all. And maybe I'm the only weirdo who just has some extra time on their hands and I'm just making all these weird connections. Y'all see how this legit makes a triangle? It's like something with this entire situation is just not right. So this to me just feels very, very ritualistic. Do y'all see why I'm just giving this whole situation the complete and utter side eye? Something is going on here, some type of psyops. Just some, it just does not make any sense. And what I notice is that a lot of us have a very short-term memory, and that is my job here, <laughs> as you know, lovely T, and what I do is to remind you guys, because social media has the shortest memory I've ever seen in life. While everybody's busy praising this and saying, you know, that's great that people are going to his funeral and the funeral should be on a tour. Hell, it should go to every state in America. Um, do you guys not realize not even a month ago, regular, degular people like you and I weren't even allowed to have funerals? You had regular people who were not even allowed to be by their family member's bedside as they took their last breath because of coronavirus, COVID-19. Do y'all not find that very strange that just a month ago, people had to do funerals via live stream? Even when Mrs. Minnie Ross from Little Women Atlanta, when she passed away, they didn't have the whole ATL come out. They had to live stream her funeral. The rule across the nation was that you couldn't have more than 10 people at a funeral. And in certain cities like New York, you couldn't have funerals at all. You literally had to do everything live stream because that was the epicenter. On top of that, they also stated that if somebody died of Corona, they had to mand you know, they had to like, you know, hurry up and cremate the body and things like that. Um, just a week ago was announced that George Floyd had the Corona in his system, but they're still traveling with this man's body. And I don't know if he's in the casket or, you know, I don't know all the details, but if they have not cremated him and they're traveling with this body, that has corona and even the who was saying that if a body has corona it's still going to be in that body they, they they can still contaminate other people so this is just very very strange to me this whole situation just does not make any sense we have a very short memory so i'm going to go ahead and play you guys what was going on not even a month ago y'all go ahead and check this out Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.